Today's presentation is brought to you by Kling Bond CA Adhesive Debonder. Available only at Kling Spores Woodworking Shop. Shop us at woodworkingshop.com. Sometimes twisting and pulling just doesn't pull the pin blank off your finger. But in that case, Kling Bond CA Debonder. A few pumps, and it's loose. I am Chris with Kling Sports Watercring Shop. Welcome back to our second part in our video series on pin turning. Today we're going to be discussing on how do I cut the blank or how do I drill the blank because we get that question a lot here. So I got a few different methods today and I'm going to show you a few, few good ways you can get to it. Let's get started. Okay. So in the last video I discussed that we are going to use a pin turning kit that has just about everything we need in it. And so first things first, we're going to open up the kit and we are going to grab out our pin tubes and our drill bit. First thing I like to do is lay the, the pin tube onto the blank like you see here. Kind of keep it about a sixteenth of a way from the end on this side and about a sixteenth away on this side. I'm going to take and mark my line here and then I'm going to do that on the other side of the line. So about, I'm about a sixteenth away from the line on this side and then I marked the line over here as well. And then a quick little tip while we're here is we have this paper here. I can take and draw some arrows on here. And that way we know where that, that center cut is. So when we put the pin together, we can kind of match things up. That'll help us out in, in a later video. But uh, so let's get started on cutting this. So today I'm going to be using a Japanese saw with the uh, double-sided, this is just something we have. You can use a chop saw or a band saw, but I thought this would be the easiest way and the best budget-friendly way to cut these pin blanks. Uh, you can see here, I have an acrylic blank here, and uh, this saw actually cuts just fine through it. It's cut about through any surface I've, I've, I've tried with it. Uh, so let, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start where that first cut is there. I already have it started here, so. And one little tip for you is if you rock back and forth, you'll actually help keep on your center line all the way through and cut straight. But with this, it's nothing to be scientific about because our big old kit has some barrel trimmers in there and will help square everything up. So one thing I like to do is I like to stick my finger up against the blade and that can just kind of helps me guide the couple push cuts until it starts to grab. And with this marking the blanks, you don't have to be all scientific about it. You don't need to square everything up. Um, you just kind of need to cut a little bit straight, but if, if you're off, it's okay. And the reason you don't really need to square everything up with the drawing where you need to cut is because that barrel trimmer will actually go through the hole where we're going to drill in the next step and square up the ends. So when you mount it on the lathe, everything's nice and 90 degrees to the spindle of the lathe. And we're about through here and we're done. So now the next step is to drill the pin blanks. Um, we're going to use three common methods to drill the pin blanks. Um, I have three different sets. I have three different sets all cut out now. Um, a simple. Grab the wooden set here, and uh, 
So with this method, you need a simple clamp of some sorts. I prefer these wooden ones because you can lay them completely flat on the table and they don't rock too much. Um, and then only thing else you need is another kind of clamp to clamp that to your workbench and kind of keep it over the edge or uh, in one of these holes or, or near your vise or something like that. So when you drill down through, you don't damage your workbench. So with this method, we have it, we have it all clamped out here. Um, you could put a piece of material underneath it to help from blowout, but because I made this pin blank a little oversized in the length when we barrel trim it, um, so only other thing we're gonna need other than the clamps is a, uh, is a drill to mount your drill bit in. Um, next step would to be roughly find your center. You can use a ruler to uh, help find your center a little bit better. If you have a piece that's a little small, uh, these pin blanks are a little oversized. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it here. Simple. First, you line up the tip of the bit into the center and you kind of look over it, look over it uh, this way as well as this way. And that way you're, you're kind of going down straight. Start off slow and just enough pressure of the weight of your hand is good enough. And that should have went through all the way. Let's unclamp it here. And we did, we went all the way through. This reason here is one reason I do not prefer this method because it's a little unstable as well as um, you're kind of trying to angle everything right and needing multiple hands to do one thing. Uh, I actually blew out the pin blank here at the bottom with this uh, stabilized burl. This pin blank is salvageable. Um, only thing we need to do is put a, a little bit of thin CA glue here and clamp it back down and let it dry. And then we can re-drill this. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drill the second blank and get this gluing up while we're drilling the second blank and it should be good to go by the time we get done with our second blank here. Three hours later. Medium cling bond CA glue. Kinda hold it there. I'm gonna use one of my clamps. Clamp it down into place and let that dry. One, one tip for you is I like to set the blank down, kind of hold it straight up on the table itself, and then tighten the, uh, tighten the clamp to it so everything kind of squares itself up. It's just one little trick I've always found that worked for me. Our rough center again. Quick tip that you can use is to use a, uh, a pin blank itself or a roller or we even have some square um, squaring jigs to kind of find your center here. Simple as that right there. And then go to the other side. Like so. Eyeballing is my preferred method. <laughs> And so I don't blow out this time. I'm kind of cleaning out the cut, going down, then back up again every single time, every few seconds here. And we went through. And have a hole on the other side. So our next method here will be using the drill press. Um, I, I went ahead and mounted my drill bit into the drill press here. And first things first, one thing I really like to make sure is that when I extend the drill press all the way that we don't go into the table, we actually go through the hole here. And then you can go ahead and tighten down your table on the back side. This is my preferred method for using a, uh, cutting into uh, hybrid blanks or resin blanks because it's a whole lot more square and 
more accurate and more uh, stable compared to the drill bit, especially when you get some of the more expensive pin blanks that some people get into. It's just a whole lot easier. I'm going to go ahead and find my rough center here. Same thing as I did last time. I laid my pin blank down. You can see here my, my uh, clamp is loose from the uh, from the uh, the pin blank here and so I, I'm, I'm square where it needs to be the only thing I'm doing is tightening it down here and that way it kind of squares everything up and the reason I'm using this clamp is rather than hold the pin blank and holding on to something small um, if that catches while I'm drilling then I have these square edges coming at my hand therefore I have more to grab on to right here then I do that little bitty pin blank. That's just something I like to do there. So we're going to go ahead and turn on the, the uh, drill press here. Kind of give it a tap to make sure we're in the center and we're good. And I can kind of hear we're getting close, and there we're all the way through, see? And we can go ahead and turn off the drill press here. Clean it off. And we've gone all the way through the blank. And everything's nice and square. And this we're drilling here is actually a Banksia pod hybrid, is what they call it. So it's half wood, half resin. And it comes from a Banksia pod, which comes from New Zealand. And we're all the way through. So that's our second method. Good. So moving over to the lathe is my third um, option for drilling the pin blanks. This is actually my preferred method because it's a whole lot more accurate. And especially when you get into like some of the, um, the crazy burls and they eventually when they dry and they twist a little bit, um, this is the most accurate way as well as when you get some of these like grain matched or, uh, pattern matched blanks like here I did the arrows to kind of line everything up here um, so when I put the blank together everything will look uh, consistent all the way through um, one thing to mention as well is I'm going to switch drill bits here um, we were in this kit there's three different drill bits right now I, I've been using a 6.9 millimeter for the snuggest fit of uh, the tube into the blank, like there's no there's no play in there, um, as well as it only needs a little bit of glue for everything to bond together. Um, because we're going to be using the lathe, and I'm going to be cutting a resin, um, we're going to be spinning a little faster on the lathe, as well as we're going to have more friction. So I'm going to be using the smaller drill bit, the 6.8 millimeter, on this to get an even snugger fit. So that one right there. And we're going to, this is the next option if you have a chuck with pin jaws, as well as if you have a drill chuck to mount in your tailstock here. I'm going to mount my drill bit in here like so. Because we are going for a grain match, I worry a little bit more about squaring up and finding center. This way is nice. And one thing to mention, um, the I cut these so like the cut was right here. So if the bit wanders while going through, it'll blow out the other side and you won't really notice that it's off center. That's just one little trick here. So let's go ahead and get drilling. So one trick for you here is to actually take your marked X and find the center and poke it onto the, the tip of the drill bit. And then you tighten your pin jaws here. And the reason we're doing that is because when you're tightening your, your pin jaws, they will actually shift the back side of the blank, but if you're holding the front side of the blank, it'll actually make it crooked. And so when you put the pin itself together, your grain will actually line up a whole lot better. So first things first, I'm going to turn the RPM all the way down on the, the lathe. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, and then I'm gonna slowly bring up the RPM to something I like. Um, RPM 
for drilling isn't too critical. Somewhere I like to be is about the 500 to 600 range. Right now I'm about 500 and that's good enough for me. So what I'm gonna do is just slowly go in and back out and back out again. One trick I forgot to mention is loosening up the tailstock and pulling it out rather than screwing in, in and out the quill of the lathe. It just makes life a lot easier and saves a little bit of time here. And the reason we're pulling it back out because it's catching all this fiber right here. So we just want to make sure we're cleaning everything out there. And I should be about all the way through here. Yep, right there. You can hear. You pull everything back out, clean everything off, turn off the lathe, and let's check the blink. Yep, and we are all the way through here. Next pin. So now that we got our pin blanks all cut and drilled out, the next step is to take the tubes and scuff them. So I'm going to take our, our gold cling sport here and wrap them around. I'm actually going to cut a little section of it because we don't need much. And just wrap around and just twist and scuff the brass tube. And the reason we're doing that is so when we apply our CA glue, the glue has something to grab onto. It also cleans any perfect imperfections off the brass, like if it has a little bitty burr on the corner or something like that. Oh, yeah. So this is what they look like. The reason for scuffing and scratching the tubes is for when you apply the CA glue to the tube, that it actually has something to grab onto, as well as the sandpaper helps eliminate any imperfections from, from uh, having a burr from being cut or having any kind of oils from being milled. So the next step is I like to grab a paper towel and, and fold it over. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some CA glue and spread it onto the brass tube and kind of smear it around there. And then we are going to insert it from the side where we cut. You see we have the arrow there. And we're going to insert it there and kind of spin it around. And then what I like to do is flip it upside down and press it on the table right there. And then spray the, the opposite side with activator. And flip it back around and activate that side. And the reason I like to do that is so the brass tube is flush right there. And if there's any excess over here, we can always trim that off when we get to the barrel trimmer. So we're going to do the same thing. Spread some CA glue. And I'm using medium CA glue. Thin will work. All right. Thick is, is normally the better for this. But medium is kind of the best of all the worlds right now. And that way we're activated and let those dry and cure and we'll go ahead and do the rest of them. Any other kind of adhesives will work just fine for this, like five minute epoxy or uh, other, other kind of epoxies, 15 minute or the T88 we stock. All of them will work fine. They just take a little bit longer than what I prefer. Um, I'm normally the kind of guy where when I'm working on something, I'm rushing, like you see there, trying to get through things fast. Quick tip for you about CA glue. If you're stuck like this, don't pull it off. Twist off. Now that we have all of our tubes glued into the pin blanks here. We're good to go with squaring up the blanks with the tube with the barrel trimmer. So let's get started on that. The next step is to use the barrel trimmer. And the, what this does is squares the inner tube with the top of the blank. So when we mount it on the lathe, everything is nice and squared and lines up properly. I prefer to use the drill press 
That way my hand is free from trying to use this and hold the blank at the same time. Um, what I like to do is put it on the lathe, spin it on a lower speed, like a 300 or 400 RPM, and, uh, and just make sure you hold this tightly. So what I did here is I left it loose on both sides, or uh, what I did here is left it free from the clamp on both sides. That way I can just easily flip both sides from it and just line it up in the hole there. And little presses. And the reason you do little presses is so you can glance down in the top here and see if you have any shiny brass tube showing through. And I'm not quite there yet. And maybe I'm right, I'm right there. So what you want is that shiny brass tube to be square with the top of the blank. So you want to flip it over to the other side. This one will not take much. And I'm squared right there. And so we want this shiny tube. You'll, you'll know when it's at the top is when it starts to get shiny from rubbing on the top of the cutter. And then you should have everything squared right there with the, the inner part of the tube. So when you mount this on, a, on the lathe, the bushings will sit flush and you won't have any gap. So now we're going to do our other blank. So one little tip for you is make sure your CA glue, CA glue is completely dry. Um, like here, we started trimming it up and the, the brass actually slipped out from underneath it. So we need to re-glue it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to add a little bit because it still feels like there's some glue in there. And now we're gonna let that dry for a little bit. And you can see with that side, we're already, we already have the brass shiny. But what I'm trying to do is you see this flat pot here, flat spot here. I'm just trying to make sure I get a nice surface all the way around. So I'm gonna work on that side a little bit more. So probably one more press. Yeah, and it, it made everything nice. This barrel trimmer actually acts like a force trim bit sometimes, so if you do your blank a little over, like I do, you can actually drill and get a big old step down there. I prefer to do this method, that way you know for sure you have enough room, because I've cut them too close before and then the blank is too small for the tube. Same as this side, it doesn't need much. And maybe a little bit more. And there we're good. And you can and you can clean these off just by pulling on it. You want to make sure you turn it off though before you do it. You just mainly do it so you can see what's going on. A little bit more. Another another thing the barrel trimmer is doing is cleaning out the inner brass tube. And making sure there's no glue on the inside of it as well as both openings are nice and clean so now that we have these blanks all cut and trimmed uh, now it's time to get them on the lathe and spinning and turn them down um, we did a few different materials here today and i'm going to get into that in the next video on why i chose some different materials and how, how how you would turn these different materials so stay tuned for our next video thank you So now that we got all the blanks cut and trimmed, 
Uh, now, now that all the blanks are cut and trimmed, we're going to get them mounted on the lathe and spinning. I did a few different materials here today, and the reason for that is I'm going to show you how to cut these different materials and turn them on the lathe. Stay tuned for our next video. Now that we got these pin blanks all, all cut and trimmed, uh, next thing we're gonna do is get them mounted on the lathe and get them spinning. Um, I did a couple different materials here today, and the reason for that is... Um... So that's all for today's episode. We did get everything we could on the, the... But we could get the tubes inserted and we got everything squared. Stay tuned for our next video where we're gonna take all these different materials and we're gonna turn them on the lathe. And if you'd like to keep up with what I'm doing here in the video, go to woodworkingshop.com. You can buy your, your particular kit, your pin blank, everything you need to go, and get it caught up with me now. So when, you're, when I'm on episode three, you will be there as well. Thanks for joining us. This is Chris. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. In today's episode, we did insert the, the shoot. Well, thanks for joining us today. In today's episode, we did get the tubes inserted into the blanks. Got them glued in, got them squared up using the, the tool, and we got them ready to go for putting on the lathe next episode. All right, so to summarize everything, we cut the blanks, bored them out, inserted the tubes, and got them square to the blank. Everything's ready to go for the next phase, which will be turning them on the lathe. So stay tuned for next episode when we get them on the lathe and we turn all these different materials down to the final dimensions and we get these things rocking and rolling. All right, to sum up everything we've done today, we cut the blanks, we inserted the tubes, we got everything, ah, I forgot to drill it. All right, so to summarize everything we've done today, we cut the blanks, we drilled them, we inserted in the tubes, we got them square to the blanks, and everything's ready to rock and roll, and we're ready to turn them on the lay. But to see that, you're gonna have to stay tuned to the next episode. Well, this is Chris with Kling Spores Woodworking Shop, and don't forget, go to woodworkingshop.com or call us at 800-228-0000 and get your pin supplies ordered today. See you next time. All right, we appreciate you joining us today. To summarize, we cut the blanks to length, we drilled them out, we glued in the tubes, we got them square to the blank, and next, it's time to turn these bad boys. But to see that, you're going to have to stay tuned for the next episode of Pin Turning. Well, this is Chris with Cling Spores Woodworking Shop. And, well, check us out online at woodworkingshop.com or give us a call at 800-228-0000 and get your pin supplies ordered today. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>